This is a brand with 112 years of rich heritage, founded by a Hamburg banker and a Berlin engineer making simple pens. Later, the business changed hands and went on to develop a fountain pen that would give the company its new name, Monblanc. Styled after the highest peak in the Alps, its distinctive white cap became its signature, reflecting its desire to be the pinnacle of writing instruments. The company was acquired by Dunhill in the 1980s, later becoming part of the Richemont family. We started this writing instrument uh, and uh, then we entered into leather, in fact, in 1926, so it was a long time ago, and, uh, and watch was a bit more than 20 years ago. When we acquired uh, Minerva, in fact, uh, now more than 10 years ago, uh, we acquired a manufacturer that has a hundred, today a 160 years uh, of history. A very strong uh, background in fine watchmaking. I think the underlying vision, you know, for Mont Blanc, it's about craftsmanship. It's about this European craftsmanship, actually. The company has kept its bearings over the years by staying ahead with the times. It's about uh, innovation. We were built on innovation. And everything we do, if it's watches, it's going to be an innovation, a new movement, a new caliber from Minerva. If it's leather, it's going to be a new material, you know, a new functionality. If it's writing instrument, it can be going to the very high end with high artistry, with these great stories like the Little Prince and Saint Exupéry. Last year, Mont Blanc made its first move to launch its first smartwatch, the Summit. It was the first brand within the Richemont Group to do so. Is it all about appealing to the younger shoppers, the millennials? Not only, because in fact, when you see who are the customers for that watch, it's not just the millennial and not just the younger generation. I think it is much beyond and much bigger than just an approach of millennials. I think it's more a question of how is the market transforming? You know, how much uh, Mont Blanc, being a very innovative maison, want to answer this digitalization of the market? And, uh, and if you see what's happening, we were the first one three years ago to launch the e-strap, which was the first attempt to go into uh, these digital products. Mm -hmm. And you see that that segment is developing so quickly, for good reasons, you know? And if that market grows to the level that I think it will grow, eventually you will see a, a big market for digital devices. And if this is a big market, why not a luxury segment within that market? Which was the biggest market? And that's a very good news as well, because you see that China was extremely important, US was important, Europe was very well responding, Singapore was also a very good market. And I believe it was a global, uh, uh, a global launch and a global success. Mm. In Brazil as well, in Mexico it was extremely successful. So, and that's why it tells me that this segment is not just uh, one topic or one trend, but it's definitely becoming a, 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 global, uh, a global segment. What are you working on next? Is there a second generation summit in the pipeline? You know, when you start a, a first generation, uh, definitely you don't want to stop after the first one. Mm. So, uh, I'm, I'm hoping to be able to present uh, a second generation uh, in a short time. How soon could that be? Well, I love Christmas and I think that uh, would be a great pleasure to bring another surprise before the end of the year. Hi, I'm Christine Tan and thanks for watching Managing Asia on CNBC Live. You can check out more of our great content by clicking on the videos on screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the very best in feature programming. Thanks for watching.